Hey, yo, what the f***? This is a pally right here. The late night flight is paid for by the following. Time to play the game where we find out who's capping. It is... This is some This is the game where we find out if this is the bull I am that Sua New Brew. And alongside with me is co-producer Smart Smarts. What's going on with your player? Everything is good, man. But where was you at last night, man? We had a nice event with Jers and uh, another artist, D Bridges. I, I don't want to mispronounce his name, but they had a warfare versus battle yesterday. You were supposed to host it. Like, what happened? Where was you at? Bro? Who's Jers? You know who Jers is. Jers is who? Teddy Bear Jers. Who's a Teddy? You know who he is. He's been on this show a million times. I love Teddy Grams. Remember Teddy Grams? Oh, God. Yo, Cinnamon, <laughs> the chocolate version, great, yo. That's great. How you, that's how you're going to do him. Great food. He's a busy guy, man. He doesn't have time for us anymore. But anyway, nah, shout out to Jerz. I heard it, I heard they had a good good event, a great nice. event. It was nice. You were supposed to host it. It would have been great if you would have been lending your voice to the event, but you know. They ain't lend no money to me. Anyway, listen, I got a good friend on here, right? My homeboy from North Carolina, the one and only Dante Hargrove, the Talk My Credo podcast. Dante, what's going on with you, sir? What's going on, bro? Hear me out. You know what we like to do at the top of the show. We got the game show music in the background. We about to have some fun. Now, usually, you know, I like to read an article, but this time we're going to do a video. So check this out. This is from the New York Post. An MMA fighter who had a post-bout interview after his win took a crazy health confession turn. Go ahead, Smarts. Last fight, I was tired. I was exhausted. I'm about to launch this NFT that's going to change the fight game. And I put in 30 all-nighters before that fight. I had herpes before that fight. Two outbreaks in the span Bruh. of a week. I'm here. I'm healthy. Let's go. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Wow. Hold on. We're going we gonna, to we gonna run that back. We're going to run that back. Last fight, I was tired. I was exhausted. I'm about to launch this NFT that's going to change the fight game. And I put in 30 all-nighters before that fight. I had herpes before that fight. Bruh. Two outbreaks in the span of a week. Bruh. I'm here. I'm healthy, let's go, whatever, it doesn't matter. Bruh. I fight. Bruh. Wow. Bruh. Bruh. <laughs> Bruh. Smarts, I ask you, is it the bull that after his win, he was ushered out of the arena? That is some BS. It's, <laughs> it's so... <laughs> Never had some BS. Living with genital herpes can be a hassle. Whenever I had an outbreak, it felt like it took days out of my life. But then I talked to my doctor about Valtrex. Just one pill a day helped reduce the number of my outbreaks. And now, I've been outbreak free for nearly a year. It's ah! Oh no. Let's go to the next one, fellas. According to CNN, an Alabama murder suspect was captured and the jail boss who helped them escape fatally shot herself. This past Monday after a 10-day manhunt that ended with a car chase in Indiana. Evansville, Indiana Sheriff Dave Wedding said the suspects fled in a black Cadillac when they were discovered, resulting in a chase. During the high-speed pursuit, members of the U.S. Marshal Service collided with the truck, causing it to crash. When this occurred, the female driver of the vehicle shot herself and the passenger was injured. The preparation that went into the fugitive's flight from the Lauderdale County Jail gave them a strong head start on authorities' intent on catching them according to the U.S. Marshals. Ahead of the escape, Vicki White, this is the woman, Vicki White sold her home for about $95,500. Smarts, you're a real estate agent. I'm going to assume this is a crack price and this is a crack house. I'm, I'm going to assume that the house was paid off and she took the whole ninety-five. dollars Listen, $95,500 I'm going to fly to Miami, find an apartment, live there for nine years, and then figure stuff out as I go along. <laughs> as just, you should. Just keeping it real. All right. Which is well below the market value, though. Yes. That's well below the market value, yes, folks. Yes, it is. And use the alias to buy an orange 2007 Ford Edge SUV. Who the f*** use an orange 2007 Ford SUV to get the f*** out of somewhere? But anyway, they used the SUV, and the pair used that to flee Florence, Alabama. She also was caught on video shopping for men's clothes and later was seen wearing a wig. But Casey White, this is the dude who's facing two capital murder charges serving 75 years for other crimes. And Vicky White, who is the veteran officer with a sterling professional reputation, also faced obstacles, including having to ditch the vehicle early in their journey and do things in public to support their escape. Their unforced errors seemed to mount as their infamy grew and ultimately spelled the end of their quest for freedom. Smarts, I ask you, 
Is it the bullshit that my little cousin who's been locked up for three years has a daughter whose mother just went to the police academy? <laughs> the BS. And finally, Young Thug was booked into an Atlanta jail Wednesday on a racketeering charge after he was indicted for conspiracy to violate the Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act, better known as RICO. The 88-page indictment filed this past Monday in Fulton County accuses Young Thug, whose real name is Jeffrey Lamar Williams, of co-founding a violent street game named Young Slime Life, commonly known as YSL, that committed multiple murders, shootings, and carjackings over a decade. YSL is affiliated with the National Bloods Game. Monday's indictment names 26 other defendants outside of Young Thug and Gunna, who is another rapper, and includes a wide-ranging list of 181 acts that prosecutors say were committed beginning in 2013. Prosecutors say the alleged racketeering conspiracy was used to further the gang's interest using lyrics and music videos as evidence. Dante, I ask you. But hold on, Dante. Smarts, I ask you. I ask you, Smarts. Dante, but I ask you, Smarts. Dante, you're here too, but Smarts, I ask you. Smarts, are you ready? I'm ready. Go ahead, dog. I'm I'm listening. Dante, are you ready, Dante? I'm ready. But Smarts, are you ready? I'm born ready. You know, listen, I am going to run this joke back, but it's going to be still funny. Is it the bullshit that Atlanta's Larry Hoover is a cross-dresser with six kids? You ain't got to answer that. Wow. That's the remix <laughs> from last week. <laughs> That's a BS. Thank you. That's you. Hey, Smarts, take it away for him. Bye-bye. It's a bunch of us. I'm a hand in the colony. Everybody on a Martin, everybody marching for a young nigga like me to get tsunami on it. I'ma get it, I'ma win a baby. I'll be on my curry till I crash a bird 40 on the Yeah, I'm acting dirty if it's at the appellation to the appellation. I'ma do whatever that they take to make a black a nation. Hold on. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Sweets, and I'm your chief flight attendant. On behalf of the pilot and the entire crew, welcome aboard the late night flight. And here is your captain, the Now River of New Jersey. The pilot of Tuskegee Training, the greatest Henny Badger who has ever lived, the creator of Black Pilot Radio and the Late Night Flight. Here is the victorious one, Nassour Nuru. What up, my passengers? We are first in priority. Donate to the Cash App dollar sign the Late Night Flight to get this work from minorities. The Late Night Flight, oh, you never heard of it? Turn up the turbulence. Catch us on these Apple Podcasts and these Spotify services. iHeartRadio, YouTube, and the Late Night QR Scan. Download Audible. Download Amazon. Just to hear us back and forth like a U-Haul fan. Hey, I started out not ahead of you. Now look at me. Young pilot with the better view. On Facebook now. Making sure you can hear all 89 episodes wherever, wherever, wherever. Podcasts are available. Now let's take off. Uh, what I also know is I get the videos of women saying, thank you, Kevin Samuels, for saving my marriage. Kevin Samuels is the reason I'm engaged. And if you watch my show instead of the clips, you'll see women all the time coming on saying, you know what, when I first heard you, I didn't know what to think about it, but I sat back and I listened to it myself, end to end. And I can't deny I agree with a lot of things you're saying. I've even tried some of these things and I'm a better friend, a better daughter, a better sister, a better cousin, a better wife, a better girlfriend. My current generations, my future generations, thank you. So uh, I'll take any of the critics because what they don't do, they don't come and actually con- talk to me when I have my smoke show. Mm. I open it up at least 30 to every 30 to 45 days and say, and you have plenty of notice. Come on, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Back to Kevin Samuels being swept under the rug. Okay, see. This is the problem. We're here to talk about the creative process of Kevin Samuels. And already, you want to start that up. We're not here to do that. I'm not trying to lose female fans, or am I? I don't know, but I'm not trying to do that. All I I do know, all I do know is the two jokes you made offline was funny. And I'm saying it right now because (laughs) I'm here to talk about the creative process of Kevin Samuels. But we're going to get this stuff out of the way right now. Okay. It was kind of funny, though. It was funny. (laughs) It was funny. I'm going to bring it out right now. So... What happened? VP Kamala Harris is mad. She said, get that man because she married a white man. That's what you said? Yeah. And then Kataja hit the gavel on it. She (laughs) took her. She judged. She she put in the order. You know? She put in the order. She put in the order. Boop. Did she also put in the order about overturning Roe versus Wade? We're going to, we'll find out. 
We'll find out about that. We right? will find out. All right. So listen. We are all gathered here today to talk about Kevin Samuels, but the creative process, because see, this is what happens when you start talking about Kevin Samuels, the, the quote unquote misogynistic relationship guru. I'm not here for that because it's a gimmick. That's what it is. It's just a gimmick. Wendy Williams, a gimmick. You know, these are gimmicks. It's nothing wrong with that. The man made a mountain of money off of relationship topics. You know how many people talk about relationship topics? Do you know? I know so many grassroots podcasts that talk about relationship topics, but this man did something different. So I was, I was watching the Joe Button podcast with Kevin Samuel, and he talked about where he got his start. He said, I spent most of my adult life in corporate sales. That's how I got to New York City. I spent some time in advertising and marketing. And then he also said, one video got to World Star and it had some traction, but of course, you know, the average at best video is the one that really blew up. And I said, you know, over 200,000 views, that wasn't about me. That's about us. That video did numbers that I've looked on their page, talking about Worldstar, and I haven't seen videos with eight years that have the same amount of views. People were from coast to coast contacting me and told me over the weekend, and they were watching the entire video and having love-in lock-ins, and it started a conversation. The conversation that he wanted to have that no one still won't have to this day is, check this out, fellas. What do the kind of men women want want from a woman? Mm -hmm. No one Facts. never talks about that. And this is what Kevin Samuel said on the Joe Button podcast. As a podcaster, I am definitely quick to find out someone's formula and spit it out to somebody and say, see, they got this, they got this, they got this. I ain't got none of this. So. I'm going to just do a quick addition problem for you guys or, or something to sum up what Kevin Samuels is, in my opinion. So Kevin Samuels plus advertising and marketing plus world star plus sensationalized conversation regarding relationships equals big time money and big time views. Now, here's the thing, in my opinion, which makes what he does with the salaciousness even dope to me. In the Joe Button podcast, he says that he has an open forum, a shark tank, if you will, Dante, where any woman, any woman <clears throat> can come on and talk the talk with Kevin Samuels. Let's just have the conversation, right? Here's the funny thing about it. For some reason, now I'm not saying that he's, that he's handpicking them or not picking them or whatever the case may be, but let me know if y'all going to agree with this or not. I'm going to just ask y'all real fast. When I ask you, I'm going to say this and y'all let me know if I'm right or wrong. The women that come on these shows, and I had to watch at least six, seven of them. I had to watch six, seven of them just to get six, seven different women. They can all make money. They can all be entrepreneurs. That's fine. I have no issue with that. But for some reason, this is just my opinion. Let me know if you agree. The mentality, the, the emotional maturity of these women are nowhere near on the level of Kevin Samuels. Not at all. I, I agree. Yo. Let me tell you something. That in itself, Smarts, makes a lot of great content. Great content. Not, this ain't about conversations. This ain't about dialogue. This is about content. Because what you have is somebody that is playing the role of quote unquote daddy telling women how it is. Mm. Think about that. I'm talking about as far as the content, what he's presenting. So the content that he's presenting, yes. Is that. I'm not saying that's what you should get out of it. I don't care about that right now. I'm just saying this is the formula that he's building. Right. Yes. And yes. it's attracting people. He was saying in the Joe Button podcast, as an image consultant, he was talking to men about men problems. That wasn't going anywhere. He started talking about women that went somewhere. And then instead of just talking to, let's say, a Oprah or a Kerry Washington, someone that has that same level of emotional maturity, maybe, in my opinion, maybe those type of women would have that. He's talking to a woman that may get a bag, but they don't have that emotional security. So their maturity is, is off point. And all he's doing is just basically, in my opinion, he's just zaddying them up. He's just like, I'm going to give you this big dog talk, whether you like it or not. And the way he deliver, delivers it is, as a matter of fact, is absolute, is barbershop talk, is locker room talk, but it's real. I'm not here to say I agree or disagree with Kevin Samuels. I just appreciate the fact that this content creator found this way to market a relationship topic 
I I would say that one, I agree with you. Yes. And one thing, just just to to add to the the marketing factor was, as you said, when he started out, he was doing his content for men. He was talking to men. And it really didn't pick up any slack until he until he started talking to women. And what I liken Kevin Samuels to is the male version of Mona Scott Young. Oh. To where you look at your love and hip hops and you look at how they're scripted and you look at how that portrayed a particular base of people. And then you have someone who's basically speaking away against that. The reason you're having these problems is because X, Y, Z, one, two, three. And I'm going to say it in a way that is going to have that same emotional sensationalism reaction out of you. Yes. So where it seemed like where you would think, oh, I quote unquote agree or disagree with you. No, it kept, keep, it kept people coming back because now it's in your face. The same way you saw these reality shows pick up the traction it did because of the sensationalism and the quote unquote drama of, can you believe so-and-so did this? Or can you believe so-and-so said that? I'm going to capitalize and use that same formula, but I'm going to niche it in a way that literally no one else is doing right now. Because like you said, there's so many relationship topic, podcast shows, radio, whatever. They can, everybody's doing it, but nobody was doing it quite like that. And to have someone with that marketing experience say, you know what? All right, I'm doing this for this particular base of people. It's doing what it's doing, but it's not catching how I need to catch it. And when I did this towards another base of people and then it hit World Star, okay, now I see where, where there's a need and I'm going to feel that need. And that's what he did. Smarts, before I let you on, Dante, I'm glad you talked about World Star. I want to bring that back real quick. Think about World Star. Think about the greatness of World Star. Takashi69. Right. Hell, 50 Tyson. Remember 50 yeah, Tyson? 50 Tyson, yes. People thought 50 Tyson was about to be a star, all right? Yes. That man made a million views on YouTube. He was the worst. Yo, Trinidad <laughs> James could beat him in a battle, okay? Uh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> they found a way to take sensationalized ratchetness and make it mm -hmm. into a mountain of money. And yep. think about this. No one cared about that 23-minute clip about that average at best. They only cared about that one clip that they saw on Worldstar. And that the was 30 it. Seconds. That yep. started everything. And then it was coronavirus season. So we're all in the house. We have nothing else to do. Uh-huh. No real TV content is really keeping us engaged in that way. This one little regular clip of just two people talking, it wasn't even that serious when you watch the whole thing in its entirety, right. turned into... The first coming, because he came before Derek Action Jackson, but he's the first coming of him. What you was going to say, Smarts? Well, I was going to, I agree um, with you. Um, and I just wanted to touch, touch on the, the impact of his delivery. It was definitely confrontational and people like confrontation. Whether he came across rude or anything, he was, he was very matter of fact. He was just buried to the point. He was absolute in his thoughts and he was comfortable in his position. And so it came across confrontational uh -huh. and uncomfortable to people. So that trigger point started a reaction no matter how you slice it. If you agree with him, you're going to jump on, you're going to defend him. If you don't agree with him, you're going to jump on there and try to prove him wrong, whether you're a man, woman, or child. Um, him, I, The zaddy thing, I'm, I'm not necessarily sure. I just think... Um, because his presentation, he was able to talk confidently because of his presentation. All he's been doing was saying what every man has always been saying. The reason why things didn't resonate with the men from the beginning was because men don't care what other men say. But, but women care about what men say. That's it. That's it. All I'm going to say this. All right. I'm going to just say this. The young man, well, the older man, would run through with the biggest handkerchief napkin you can see all right. He had one of them folded up red lobster napkins in the suit pocket. OK, that was a bit much. All right. Long blue suit. You know what I'm saying? Not a zoot suit, but a fitted suit and whatever bins or whatever car he want to ride around in. I'm sorry, yo. In the hood, he's over here portraying Zaddy. All right. No, I, got, I get you. I get it. I get it. And like I said, the women are going to give him his ear, their ear because of his presentation. That's all I'm saying. And they, and they want to break him down because he look, he, he clean, he precise, he's put together. So there's nothing that they can break him. They, they can't come on in 
break them down. I'm going to say this because this might be a 13 <laughs> minute segment and I'm going to just leave this alone. You know what? I'm blaming the women for Kevin Samuels. Yeah, you have I'm to. I'm blaming. You know why? You know why? You got to. Because all this man was trying to do was be your pimp. But because wow. of the Me Too movement, y'all can't get Let no me money be your with manager. Him. Let me be your manager. That's all he wanted to do. <laughs> we'll be this, right back. You know? We'll be right back. This is the Late Night Flight. <laughs> Before we start this new segment, Smarts, hear me out. I just want to ask you a quick question. Dante, I'm going to do the same with you. Three people that you would like to have dinner with. Any three people in the world. Living or dead. Doesn't matter. Who are they? Quick. Oh, that's dope. Barack Obama, Shaquille O'Neal, Frederick Douglass. Yo, hold on, hold on. Shaq? Shaq. You don't even watch sports. What's that about? Shaq is that dude, bro. He's so low-key, but he... Yo... Low he key. got that information. He's 7'2". Seven two. He's 7'2", seven two, but he <laughs> carries himself like he's a normal, regular, everyday person. And he would probably own the whole 30 block radius. <laughs> <laughs> that he's, the land that he's walking on may all be his and you, you, won't, you won't know. The Starbucks might be his on the corner. The Walgreens down the block that you go to might be his. The, the clothing store in the mall that you shop at might be his. And you would never know. You know what? You the got music a, you listening to might be his. You got a good point right there because he did take over a racist pizzeria. So you got uh-huh. a point there. I, I got to talk to that dude. You, gotta, gotta you, gotta, you got a point there. Dante, three people. Who you got? I would have to go with... Uh, I thought this would be easy, but it's, it's a lot tougher when I think about it. Oh, yeah. But I would say Malcolm X. Okay. Tyler Perry. Whoa. Yep. We got questions. And elaborate. Yeah, we got I, questions yeah, yeah, over yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't I'm believe you did that. definitely going to elaborate that. on Tyler Perry. Definitely going to elaborate on Tyler Perry. I want to be the and, waiter. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I think it'd be very interesting to sit down with Elon Musk. Okay. That's fire. That's fire. Yeah. That's fire. fire. Yeah, Elon Musk and Tyler Perry at the same place at the same time. Yeah. That's, that's interesting. Right. Wait, Elon Musk in scientific mode or Elon Musk smoking weed? Which one? Or white nationalist. Or white nationalist Elon one? Musk. Which one? I need it all. I need all of it <laughs> Because I got so many questions and, and I want to pick his brain in all, in the weed smoke mode, in, in the white nationalist mode, uh, you know, the, the quote unquote African American mode, the scientific. I, I need all of that. I Elon. Got questions. Elon, bring your clan in mass. We, we'll, I'll see you later. Anyway, yeah, you start talking about a portal might open up. <laughs> yeah, so you know. <laughs> hey, yo, my three people is very normal compared to y'all. Y'all have some very good uh, names. So for me, Vince McMahon. Yeah, sure. LeBron uh-huh. James. Dave Chappelle. Okay. Okay. I knew, I, I knew, I knew Vince McMahon. He getting a free dinner. You paying for it too. Yeah. Hey, yo. Yep. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Why not? Mm-hmm. Listen, first of all, I'm hanging out with the three greatest cartoon characters you oh, can find. God. All right. God. Just keeping God. it real. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be an animated time. It really is. What? Dave Chappelle and Vince McMahon just talking? Like Dave Chappelle just having five minute long winded jokes for Vince McMahon yep. is going to just have me just dying already. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, Dave Chappelle isn't laughing as much as we are right now. I don't know. Uh, listen, so, um, so at the Netflix is a joke fest at the Hollywood Bowl, Dave Chappelle was on stage, on stage attempting to do what he's now notoriously known for. And that's pissing people off through comedy, right? Yes. So apparently, uh, a quote unquote fan wanted to put an end to Dave's antics before it even started. He hopped on stage. And in WWE fashion, attempted to Goldberg, Roman Reigns, spear Dave Chappelle to the ground. Oh, wow. Now, now it didn't work out like he planned. After the attempted takedown failed, he was like, oh, snap, abort mission. He attempts to flee the scene. He tries to run away. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, Dave Chappelle's security team, yes. they hawked him down and proceeded to lay the smacketh down. And then I heard that he got folded up like a envelope. They just packaged them up. Listen, origami. Okay? <laughs> origami. They packaged them up for the authorities. <laughs> he, was, he was looking like a, a, a an origami goose by the time he was stretching out of there. You want the loose leaf fold or you want the swan Listen. fold? What you want? Listen. <laughs> what you want? You want the trapper keeper or do you want the bird? What do you want? I, I, I think they used the college bound uh, material on that because yeah, he... <laughs> He learned a lesson that day. Dante, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Dante, we all learned the lesson. Dante, what? So, what was Jamie Foxx and Chris Rock doing there? Well, uh, all I know uh-huh. from what they say, yes, Jamie Foxx was doing the people's elbow 
uh, along with Buster Rhymes. Bust, Buster Rhymes was, you know, like a dungeon dragon. He was he was in, in there too. Okay. Uh, and Chris Rock. Now, Chris Rock was with Dave Chappelle. They're kind of doing the duo tag team, do the mini tour with Netflix as a joke uh, for, the, for the festival and this, that, and the third. So he was there and, you know, he had a few words to say after all this went down. Mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. you know, he threw a little shade towards, um, towards the, you know, Willie from Philly. Oh, really? Mm. Yeah. That's yeah. funny. So first of all, I can't, I can't see Chris Rock being in a tag team with nobody because obviously he ain't going to hit you back. <laughs> so no, we ain't going to do that. He, he's the, he's the <laughs> one where he gets beat up all match and then he does that saving tag. To, to his tag team partner. If he was a bad guy, they would call the him a, a chicken shit hill, I believe. Yeah. That's <laughs> yes. Nah, yes. matter of fact, he'd be on the sideline. He might be Paul Bearer or somebody just sitting on the <laughs> sideline. <laughs> nah, he, he's, he's like Bobby the Brain Heaton. You know, he's the, he talks all the shit and <laughs> doesn't okay. do anything. <laughs> Paul Heyman. Okay, yeah, there we go. Hey, yo, wow. Hold on. This is, <laughs> yo, hold on. Listen, let's stop right there. First of all, no, no, we're going to keep recording America, but hold on. We got to stop right there for smarts. We just gave him like eight WWE references. Yeah. You just lost my man. Yo, Don't do that. Oh, okay, my bad. Don't do that. Kill me. <laughs> now, Dante, we friends now. You know what I'm saying? Hold on. Uh-huh. But but you just look, we, I, I gotta play the R. Kelly sound. You're killing me. You know what I'm saying? You just, you just killed my man. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. My bad, smart, my bad, man. You know it's all saying? good, man. It's all good. It's all good. Now, it's funny that we're talking about Dave Chappelle being protected because it's the sequence that is uh having me thinking real hard because so. He's at the Netflix is a joke seminar concert thing. He's doing uh-huh. his bit. Someone runs up on stage and you're telling me that security folded that ass up, correct? Folded him Absolutely up. Absolutely correct. Yes. Okay. So let's just look. I know we all talked about these things forever. We talked about Will and Chris forever, but I'm just saying. So someone gets smacked. No security. And when they bring somebody to go talk to Will Smith, all they do is say, uh, you know what? Nah, it's all right. It's all good. Matter of fact, go get your award. Matter of fact, go get your award, get your wife, and go to the after party and have some fun. Well, go ahead. Well, huh? Well, I'm listening. It's two different platforms. Mm. And this goes back to my blickety black. Mm-hmm. My blickety black. Okay. Theory that I had about the culture. Oh, okay. No, no. You can you can you can talk about the white audience thing because. If you want to bring the white no, audience, no, 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 no. It's not the, I just want to let you know. Because if you want to say this is white audience, I would have saw. I said culture. Oh, okay. I'm about to because say because the platform, okay. the platform of the Oscars uh-huh. is not our culture, right? But uh-huh. Dave Chappelle's platform is our culture. I don't know about that. You talking about Netflix though, dog? No, but it, they're paying Dave Chappelle. It's his production. Okay, fine, but he, still, he, he no, he runs the show. They just write the check. Netflix is a joke. <laughs> okay. No, I'm just saying. You know what I'm saying? Dante, and so is, you, do you agree with me? Do you hear what I, do you hear my point of view? I I I hear what you're saying, and I, I'm with you to a certain extent on the culture. Now, now as you say, you know, Buster Rhymes and Jamie Foxx were not at the other place. So I, I get that. So but I'm, they, I'm they, talking they, about consequences of your actions. If you this is if, true. if you come onto a black platform, you will get your ass whooped. Period. All right, let's make this a let's make this a subject of security. And don't get me okay, wrong, because okay. I understand the race part. I'm not even knocking your race part. So if we're talking about a white audience, Smarts, that means whoever shot JFK and the white person that shot MLK, they might as well just assassinate Will Smith right then and there. Because they wasn't having that. I'm just saying, bro, bro, if I was at a white affair and I smacked somebody that was that looked like me in front of public, and we're all supposed to be people in America, we're together, then it should be. Two security guards, one Hispanic, one Asian, whipping my ass. All right, not on a white platform. They, they, they then get they two Ku Klux Klan members wait, wait, whipping wait, my wait, ass. But, it don't but matter. That's not their culture. But that's not their culture. That's what I'm saying. They were appalled. I get that. So what I'm saying. But what to did you they is, say? They say take his award back. Uh, but that's that's not getting folded up. No, I right. That's you, what I'm saying. If you step on if you step on a black stage mm-hmm. or a black platform stage, expect mm-hmm. to get folded up. Well, listen. It wasn't a black stage. It wasn't a white stage. It was a fake stage. We'll be right back. (laughs) This is The Late Night Flight. (laughs) What the f***? This that pile of right here. So HipHopDX.com or HipHopDX on YouTube, they put out a, well, I, I got this on YouTube. So they put out a clip, if you will, where they wanted to find out if you can make your own super group out of one rapper from the 80s. 
the 90s, the 2000s, the 2010s, and a new rapper, who would your, your Super 5 be, basically? Oh, wow. Okay. So, you're going to be the judge. Yeah. Me and Dante, we're going to tell you our five. Dante, you go ahead, bro. Yes, sir. All right. So, me, I'm a lyrical miracle guy. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> Yo, I'm, it's I'm, almost... I'm, Yo, was, was I born yeah. in Shelby, too? Was you, maybe. You, you, what's going on? You might you might as well. Y- y'all stop playing. Don't, don't, don't play with us like that. <laughs> don't, don't play with us like well, that. Well, hold on. Matter of fact, before, before we even get lyrical, into your five... Spiritual, lyrical, lyrical, uh-huh. lyrical, uh-huh. lyrical, Wait, lyrical. But before we get into your five, P.D. Pablo better be on your five right now. And you better be spinning that like a helicopter right now, dog. P.D. Pablo is not in my top 3,000. Shout out to P.D. Pablo, though. North Carolina going to raise up. Y'all know the song. My my lyrical miracle super group. From the 80s, you got to go with Rock Him. Okay. For for the 90s, you know, he's not the quote-unquote most lyrical, but I need a David Ruffin of the group. I'm going Tupac. Okay. For, For the 2000s, this was when he really hit his stride and people started giving him his flowers. I'm going to go with Black Thought from the Roots. Whoa. For the, Whoa. Two, for, for, for the 2010s, I got to go with K-Dot. Got to go with Kendrick Lamar. And for the new one, for the new rapper, quote unquote, he only been out a couple of years. I'm going to go with Toby Nguigwe. Okay. Oh, okay. Fine. I like Toby. So he going yeah, to get a power group. Yo, yeah, Toby yeah, is like, nice, yo. Black I power, like Toby. Black thought What's conscious. Hey. Uh-huh. Strong, opinionated. Group. Very. Exactly. That's a solid group. Substance. That's, Substance. That's, that's very, a solid group. That's very <laughs> solid. I can't even hold you. I, he has one person on the list that I have. Who you think that person is? Be honest, Smarts. You know me. Let's see, let's see if that... So he said it was Rock Yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 no. You got, you got the list. It, okay. I, I'm going to split myself between Rock and Black Thought. Really? You think... Who you think my favorite rapper is, bro? Who I be talking about all the time, yo? Like as far as like kind of new but not new. Who the one I think Kendrick, is the king of Kendrick. exactly, uh, yo? Yeah, I, I Kendrick. know. I'm just saying that's that. I'm just saying like I'm, I was trying to. Right. No. No. It's all yeah, good. It's yeah, all good. No. Yeah, yeah. I have much respect for Rock Kim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Oh my just god. Just from because because Kendrick is newer. And, yes. You know what I'm saying? So that that was a good. But yes, he does talk about Kendrick a lot. He goes my five yeah. right here. He goes my. That five. actually rap similar too. And I think about it. A little y'all bit. De- y'all deliver similar yeah. too. A little bit. On y'all music. I, now that I think about it, y'all pronounce words the same too. When I when Kendry started rapping y'all, y'all and I heard got him. Dredge too. You know that. Well, right? that's that's well, I just started mine like a year ago, so it don't really matter. Just, oh, well, you know, we did just we both did just start doing that. Me and K Dot. You know what I'm saying? But that's how I feel about my boy K Dot. Like when yo, when K Dot, yo, K Dot was the first rapper. Cause I, I used to be a uh I used to be a songwriter, Dante. So okay. I I wrote for people. I wrote for Lost Boys, I wrote for Naughty by Nature. I I, I and in one point of time of my life, at 28, I was uh-huh. somebody when I was... Like, I was a real hood songwriter. Like, I lived broke at my uncle's house at 28. You know what I'm saying? But when I hop out the house, I'm getting... You know what I'm saying? It was, it right. was a good life. It was a right. good life, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. I got you. Here we go. In the 80s, I got to go with KRS-One. Okay. I, I like got to I got to yeah. go with the freestyle like yo, if I need somebody at the studio just off the top of the mind like yo, just just murder this guy real fast. KRS yeah. want to do that no problem. Absolutely. All right, for the 90s, yo, this took yo, word, this was hard for me. This was yeah. hard for me because I'm trying my best not to be a uh, regional bias. I'm from the northeast, yeah. you know? So I, I will say this, I have one from every region. How about that? So number okay. Th- so for the nineties, Jay Z. Come on now, I'm, I have to yeah. do that. Jay Z, yeah. Hove, of course. Nineties, yeah. Hove, and nineties, Hove. All right, not the two thousand yeah. Hove. Nineties, Hove. Okay, yeah. And it was yes. pure, and it was good. Reasonable doubt, volume yeah. one, volume two. I'm talking about that. Volume was, two. Yep. Ah, oh, the best Jay Z. Okay. All right. Gotcha. Two thousands. I was going to go Nas. I was going to go Nas. Like as far as Nas yeah. putting out albums in the two thousands, he got like six, seven albums in the two thousands alone. Yeah, yeah that's but, true. But I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. Over the weekend, I listened to the greatest mixtape in rap history. 2009, no ceilings. It gots to be oh, Little Wayne, it though. Be Lil Wayne, it yeah. gotta be Wheezy for my 2000s. Yeah. Then 2010, K Dot, of course. He is the king of rap. Not Drake, it is Kendrick Lamar. We know this. I always uh-huh. say this, all right? Yes, absolutely. And then my new guy, look, I got, look, this is gonna be the twist. The new guy is a street guy. From my favorite place right now, Memphis. It's my dude, Key Glock. Key Glock. Key Glock. Okay. Key okay. Glock yeah. is my okay. man. This, yo, you know what's so funny about him? His street style 
it's like it's not even something super special. He just has the perfect combination of the hardcore street rhymes with the dopest beats. Whoever do the let the band play and um K Teeth, you f that shit up, whatever Drake be saying, whoever be making them beats, they be killing it for Key Glock and they know his flow and they know his style. And I love, like I just love their chemistry going on. But anyway, Smart, oh, yeah. who you got? Golly. This is, yo, we can't do a point system. Like, we can't do 80s, 80s, <laughs> 90s, 90s. And yo, not dog, you, one. you the producer. You can do what you want. Yeah, it's, it's, it's on you. Bro. All right, it's so, on you. So, so for the 80s, uh -huh. I'm going with KRS-One. Okay. Okay. There's no wrong answer with the 80s, by the way. Right. Come on. Nah, Rock Kim no. and KRS-One. Nah, yeah. That, like, yo, that's right, crazy. Right. When you put yeah. 90s, now when you put 90s Jay-Z up against 90s Tupac, you got to go Tupac. Got to go Tupac. You gotta go Tupac. You gotta go Tupac. Huh? I ain't mad at that. Tupac went dominant well, in the 90s. Now, 2000s, Lil Wayne versus... Yeah, man. When you yeah. said, we said it, Black Thought? Black Thought, yeah. That's Wayne. Nah, it, yeah, that's Wayne, hands down. K-Dot, that's a draw. That's a draw. Now, the new, yeah. the new, yeah, the, the new. new. See, come on, son. Hey, Key Glock, come on, Key son. Glock, yeah. dog. Hey, man, hey, dog, hey. Yeah. Hey, dog, hey. I'm gonna do, do you yeah. Chicago style. Hey, dog, hey. <laughs> what you talking I'm, about? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say... I'm nah, nah. You can pick Toby. I have no, 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 no. Toby's no, 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 a better no, no, rapper no, no, than Key no, Glock. No, 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 no. Toby is a better rapper yes. than, than, than Key Glock. Mm -hmm. But however, yes. Key Glock is more entertaining and more impactful than Toby. He gives, he gives me that, that, that Tupac that, vibe. That relatability. The, the relatability. Yeah. So but I'm going to go with Key Glock. Toby's. Yeah. Toby bars hit too hard for people. It's a, it's a punch. It's a, it's a, it's a, oh, they all haymakers. His bars, yeah. Toby's bars are all haymakers. And I understand why he picked them because he's a lyrical person. But I can't be getting punched in my head all day in my headphones. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you. I don't mind. I personally yeah, don't mind. Go ahead, Toby. Yeah. Do what you gotta yeah. do. I love yeah. the lyrics, but I understand so, what you're saying. So, 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 I, I battle rap. So that's all I love. Yeah. So, 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 so I'm gonna get, so Nas, you win. You got this one, but they were two really, really good, thought out, well, you know what I'm saying? Ex yes, sir. Ex well expressed, everything. You guys did You guys did your thing. It was well thought out, man. Appreciate that. Real quick, we got two minutes. So I want to talk about the evolution of disrespect, not because of the rappers that we chose, but the rappers that have evolved from the 80s to right now. Yes. So for instance, in the 80s, Let's say if Kumo D and Curtis Blow was talking, they didn't even say hoes yet. They'll just be like, these honey so fly. They in my eye. You know, it's just cool. <laughs> and then the 90s, Dr. Dre was like, bus stop smelling like hoes and skis is whatever he said. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it was, it was a pronoun. Like hoes was her. You know what I mean? Hoes was she. Yeah. Right? And then in the 2000s, is it was just, in my opinion, it was just plural. Like ludicrous. I got hoes in different area code. You know what I'm saying? I just, uh -huh. like, listen, we're going to treat these hoes with some respect. We just, <laughs> all right? <laughs> <laughs> That's how that was, you know what I'm saying? But That's now, true. what's going on is, it's more of a cinematic, it's a graphic detail. It's like FIFA form be like, she's talking my Buck my dang, buck my pick. It's porn. Baka, it's porn. Same yeah. You know, yeah, it's, that's what I'm saying. Porn now. It's only fans. It's, it's yeah. Triple X right now. It's yeah. only fans, oh, yeah. but, but only lyrical fans. though. Fact. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They just like, yo, she's sucking me off. And I'll be like, yo, when you hear the R&B music talking about how they sucking Suck me, me off, facts. you be like, oh. Yeah. But, yeah. but at the same time, I'm not mad at it because the every, you talk about relatability, the everyday person talks like that. Yeah, right. but then your kids just be like, your kids be bopping their head to that. That's right. <laughs> because, because, you know, you, you have to think about it. Like, you know, just just on this same topic, like, look at R&B. Prince was talking about Little Red Corvette. And y'all thinking, as a kid, you think he's talking about a car, but no, he ain't talking about a car. Right, but right, These right. days, you know, it's just, you know exactly what's being talked about. It's more vivid, and it's just more more raw, pause. Right, and it's just, right. No, you know, it's, it's, it's more graphic. So, I'm, not you know, gonna, I'm not gonna hold you. I was a teenager. And I was like, head, head, and more head. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't even yeah. know what I was saying. That's what I'm no saying. Idea. Dante, Dante's son is in the backseat right now talking about some dad. They sucking me off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, who? Who, who the f*** is sucking you off? This little n***a. <laughs> 
Welcome to the grind house. We are in Memphis. This is Congo Connor. Get the f out my way, ESPN. TLNF is here. The TLNF report is here. And I am in Memphis. I'm at the grind house with podcast personality Dante Hargrove. Dante, listen, we just heard a meteorologist from Memphis talking about how they, uh, you know, make things rain through the clouds. Meanwhile, he called Draymond Green, a person who actually makes it rain, called him a knuckle mouth or something. Something about knuckles and a mouth. It was a gorilla reference. I didn't like it. It sounded real jungle, and I don't like it at all. What did you think about it? Talk to me. Well, I think sometimes when when you are under so much, you know, news and stuff of talking about the weather, sometimes when the sun shines on you, it shows people who you really are. I get it. That's a weather joke. Ha, ha, ha. ha That's ha, funny. Ha. That's so funny. Next time, talk a little faster. We're here on the sideline, goddammit. Oh, We're oh, watching shit, the shit. basketball game. Anyway, listen, next question. I, I saw that Draymond dragged somebody that was from the Memphis Grizzlies, and then the Memphis Grizzlies said, f*** all that. We ain't having that with with Gary Payton. Uh, I like to use a joke. They say Gary Payton is the glove. Well, Gary Payton the second is the sock because he got hops, okay? Word is born. All right, anyway, next thing. But check me out. Here's my issue. John Morant got his knee turned around. Did a, they did a hook hill spot, if you will. Uh, they, they double teamed them. They did a Harlem Heat move, and, and now he's injured. I don't know how long he's going to be out for. Why, why the f*** did they use why the f*** did they injure the, the, the best player in the NBA right now as far as highlights uh, highlights are concerned? What's going on here? I'm sorry for uh, for, for stuttering. I, I'm looking at women at the same time trying to watch the basketball. What's going on? Talk to me. Well, it's because John Miranda is a f problem, and the Golden State Warriors knew that he was a problem. So they said, you know what? We're going to do that, that super move, the Harlem Heat. Take this nigga out. That's what they did. It's funny that you say he he has all the moves. I feel like the only move he has is the one that he when he carries the ball, because that's what he does in life. That's all he needs. No, I'm saying like he carries. Like, like I, I exactly, think yes. if, if yes. we played hood basketball, I would be the one to call every time. As soon as you get the ball, carry. As soon as you get the ball, carry. Carry. <laughs> carry. Give me the ball, bro. You carry all the time, bro. Word is ball. And it will be valid. That is valid. Yes. My last question to you, my friend Dante, and you can go check him out on Talk My Credo. Is that the name of your podcast? Yes, sir, it is. I got your last name wrong, but I got the podcast right. You know I study you, brother. All right, hear hey. me out. Who is going to win the NBA championship? Talk to me. Who's the two teams going to be in the finals and who's going to win it? Talk to me. The finals is going to be Golden State versus the Boston Celtics with Golden State in seven. Get this brown skin up out of here. You over here picking a bunch of light skin in Boston. I've got no time for you. I got no time for you. Key Glock killers. Somebody get Key Glock killers in here right now. I'm getting tired of this. This is Congo Connor. This is the TLNF report. We're balling. Thank you for flying the late night flight. Shout out to all the pilots who contribute to the fastest rising podcast. Hey, yo, what the f? This is a pilot right here. 